If the central purpose of economic activity is to produce goods and services to meet needs and wants, well then we're going to need something to produce goods and services with. That's where economic resources comes into the story. An economic resource is a scarce resource that can be used to produce goods and services. For example, wood is an economic resource because it's scarce and it can be used to produce furniture, for example. An economic resource can be categorized into four groups. These four categories are known as the factors of production. So let's take a closer look. Let's imagine that we want to produce an iPhone. What do we actually need to produce this iPhone with? Firstly, you need materials to produce the iPhone with. You might need glass for the screen or plastic for the case. This factor of production is known as land. Land is anything that comes from the ground that can be used to produce goods and services with. The reward for land is rent. So now that we have materials, we might need laborers to actually carry out the physical activity of assembling the phone, or in Apple's case, slave laborers. The reward for labor is wages. The third factor of production we might need, now that we've got materials and workers, is machinery to assemble the phones. For the sake of your AS Level Microeconomics course, the type of capital you need to understand is physical capital, or capital that can be used to produce things with. The reward for capital is interest. Last but not least, to produce something, you need enterprise or an entrepreneur. Enterprise is the act of combining the factors of production, having an idea and taking a risk to form a firm in order to produce a good or service. For example, Steve Jobs is an entrepreneur who brought together the factors of production to form Apple, who now produce a range of electronic goods. The reward for enterprise is profit. A free good is the opposite of an economic good because free goods are unlimited in supply. For example, air. If I use air to blow up a balloon, it doesn't mean that there's less air to blow up a tire with. Therefore, air is not a scarce resource, but can be used to produce goods and services. Therefore, it is a free good. The economic syllabus also requires you to understand that the environment is a scarce resource. With global crises such as war, poverty and climate change raging on, it's more important now than it ever has been to study economics. Not just as a way of understanding why these problems occur, but as a toolkit for finding solutions to the challenges that our generation face. I don't know about you, but I think it's about time that we evolved economics beyond a subject that looks at human beings as infinitely greedy consumption machines to a new subject that better responds to the changes and needs in society. That's where you guys come in. You're the economists of the future, and my hope is that you will learn this subject and take economic theory to the next level for the next generation.